What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, I haven't seen a whole lot of videos out there about using Fusion 360 for architectural modeling, so I thought I'd either do a series on this or at least make a video just showing you how to uh, model out a shed with framing inside of Fusion 360. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So for this video, we're just gonna model out a very simple shed. I don't wanna get super complex on this one, um, but but what I want to do is I want to start off and we're going to create a sketch. It's basically going to be the size of our floor inside of Fusion 360. So in this case, we're going to assume that this is going to be something like, um, we'll call it 15 feet long. By 10 feet wide. So you can see how what I did is I just drew a line along this axis and then another line along this axis. And all we're gonna do is we're just going to, for now, I'm not gonna model out too much floor framing. We're just gonna give this a little bit of thickness as if this was a three quarter inch sheet of plywood. So I'm just going to use the extrude tool and extrude this up three quarters of an inch. And what I wanna do is I wanna call this um, something like base flooring. And we're gonna say 15 feet by 10 feet. And what we want to do is we want to take this, we want to right click on it, and we want to click on create components from bodies. Because what we want to do is we want to model these out as components because we're going to schedule these things out a little bit later. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm just going to extrude out wood boards for the different parts and pieces in here. So for this one, for example, I'm going to create a sketch, align it with this face, and then I'm gonna assume that the base pieces on this are gonna be two by sixes. So I think that means this is gonna be five and a half inches wide by an inch and a half thick. So I'm just going to model out the profile of this board, finish my sketch, and then I'm just gonna extrude this. So I'm just gonna click on extrude. And so we're just gonna set our extent to be distance. We're gonna make sure this is set as a component. And then if I remember correctly, this should be 15 feet long. So I'm just gonna extrude this negative 15 feet, making sure to set this as a new component. And I'm gonna click on okay. I'm gonna go ahead and name this two by six, 15 feet long. And then I'm gonna use, we'll go ahead and use the move or copy tool and we're gonna create a copy and we're gonna use the point to point function. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our origin point right here, and then we're gonna set our target point to be right here. And so what that did is that created a copy right there. And so I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna create a sketch on this face. And again, we'll do five and a half inches wide. And then we we'll use the rectangle tool in order to finish this off. And we're just gonna extrude this. And again, we're gonna set this as a new component because we're gonna schedule all of this out. In this situation, because I'm not 100% sure what this distance is, I'm gonna use my extent and set it to two object. And I'm just gonna click and that's gonna extrude this all the way across. And you can see how this is now 109 inches. And right, we're gonna click on okay. So that's gonna be a two by six. 109 inches and possibly what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my document settings set my units instead of inch to be foot and click on OK and so I'm actually going to change this to say I think it's going to be nine foot one inch and I'm going to hit enter and then we're going to do the same thing on the front only at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from this edge right here and I'm going to set this to be three feet wide I'm assuming that my opening on the front of my shed is going to be six feet so I'm going to set this to be three feet then we'll just draw a rectangle right here and we'll just extrude this across make sure to set it as a new component and we'll extrude this across the width of our two by six would which would be five and a half inches and we'll click on OK. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to create a copy again. So I'm just going to use the move tool. We're going to set this to be move object components. We'll set our origin point to be right here and our target point to also be right here. 
And so now what we want to do is we want to frame up our vertical framing. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a sketch. And so I'm assuming this corner is going to get kind of a box frame. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to model this out so that I can extrude it up. And we're just going to extrude this as a component as well. And one thing I haven't been doing a very good job of that I need to do better of is making sure that I'm labeling these as I go. But I'm going to extrude this up so that it's eight feet high. And then I'm gonna go back real quick and just rename these. And the reason that's gonna be important, so this is gonna be important because when we schedule this out, we can get a count of our wood in here. And so the nice thing about this is now that we have this modeled in here as a component, we can use the rectangular pattern tool set to components to make our copies really easily. So we're gonna set this to go, we're gonna select our component, we're gonna select our direction to be this line right here, and we're gonna set this, instead of setting it by extent, we're gonna set it by spacing. And we're gonna assume that these are going to have a distance of 18 inches. So we're just gonna type in 18 inches, and then once we've done that, we can turn this quantity up by as many as we need. And so what we may need to do is we may need to create another copy to make it, make this box framing in the corner. But you can see how adding this framing was really easy. Well, Now I can come in here with the move tool or the copy tool, select this component, Set our origin point to be right here. Set our target point to be right here. And click on OK. And we're gonna create one more copy. And I know the framing on this may not be exactly right, but it should give you an idea of how we're going to do this. And then you can make your framing however you want. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that framing right there. Since So we'll do the same thing on this other corner. So I'm just going to move our component we're gonna create a copy. Set our origin point here and our target point here. So we have a copy right there. So now what we have is we have all of our vertical framing in here for this one side. Well, we can do the same thing that we've done before by just taking all of these. So we can just use the move tool or you could use the rectangular pattern tool as well and select all of these different components. And then we would just create a copy and do the same thing we've been doing where we set our origin point and our target point. So now we have the framing for our shed in here. So I'm gonna come in here and add the other framing in here real quick. Um, I'm going to speed up this part of the video. I'm just gonna use the same methods we've already talked about. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all this base framing and I'm just gonna copy it up. So I'm just gonna go through here and I'm just gonna select the components associated with those. So I'm just doing a shift click on each one of those. And then we're just gonna copy it up using the move tool. So I'm gonna create a copy, set my origin point to be right here. I'm gonna set my target point to be right here. So, and one thing we may need to change a little bit is we probably want our framing to go over the top here. You could either model this out as a taller piece of wood, which you might do sometimes, or you might just run this all the way across. So in this situation, I'm gonna model out a two by 12 along this piece right here. So I'm just going to create a sketch. We'll finish our sketch, and then we're just gonna extrude this across. So in this situation, our distance is gonna be six feet. So we'll just extrude this across six feet, make sure this is set as a new component and click on OK. And then we can just call this two by 12 header. And I'm assuming we would do this with some kind of a hanger right here. There's probably other ways to do this as well, but we're gonna go ahead and leave this as is for what we're doing right here. So we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna rename this component. We'll just call it two by 12, six foot long. All right, so now what we wanna do is we model, wanna model out our roof beams or our roof support. So we're just gonna create a sketch. And I'm gonna click on one of these faces or maybe even this construction plane. I'm just gonna click right in here. Then I'm just gonna draw a line based on this midpoint up four feet. 
So when I do that, that's gonna give me kind of a guide point for where I want the top of my roof to be. And so what I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm gonna draw a line down based on the angle that I want. So in this situation, I'm just gonna say I want this to be a 35 degree angle. Notice how I was able to basically type that value into this box just by hitting the tab key and then typing in 35. Now, I can set a length to whatever I want that to be. So maybe we wanna make this simple and make this um, like eight feet long or something like that. That way we can buy these in these lengths. Then all I'm gonna do is type in a value of eight and hit the enter key. And so that's given me the top part of my wood piece right here. And what I wanna do now is I'm gonna offset that by selecting the offset tool. Make sure the button for chain selection is not checked. I'm just gonna click on this line and then move this down. And in this situation, I'm gonna type in negative 5.5 inches and hit the enter key. And so what's kind of easy about this now is you can see where this intersects. And so if you were going to have to like notch these out, you could just draw that notch into your piece of wood if you wanted to, just by drawing this like this. We're also gonna draw a line between these two points. So now this is actually a filled in face. And we're just gonna click on finish sketch. So what that's gonna allow us to do is now we can take that and we can extrude that into a component. So we're just gonna use the extrude tool, click on this, go down to new component, and we're just gonna extrude this by the thickness of our two by six, which in this case, we're gonna say it is an inch and a half, and hit the enter key. And so now what we have is we have some rafter framing in here. We have a rafter framing piece that we can name. So we can name this one two by six, eight feet long, rafter framing. We're gonna go ahead and click on OK. We're just gonna do what we've done before where we're going to use the rectangular pattern tool in order to create a pattern here. And so in this situation, we're gonna assume that our spacing on this is gonna be something like 18 inches. So we're just gonna activate the rectangular pattern tool. We're gonna to select our object. We're gonna select a direction. And so that can be any of these lines. And we're just gonna move this across and we'll go ahead and say this is going to be by spacing. We're gonna say it's gonna be 18 inches. And then we can just move this count up. So in this case, that works fairly nicely. The other thing we could do if we wanted these to be evenly spaced instead is we could just do this by extent and we could just set our length to be 15 feet minus an inch and a half. That's gonna be the thickness of our two by um, our two by six. And then we can click okay that way. So if you want these to be equally spaced as opposed to doing them every 18 inches, you can do that as well. We're just gonna click on okay. So what that's done is that's given us half of our rafter framing. Well, I don't wanna come in here and model all of this again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an offset plane right here and click on OK. That's given me a plane and then I'm gonna use the mirror tool in order to create copies of all these. So in order to do that, we're gonna set our pattern type to components. I'm gonna set our mirror plane to this plane and that's gonna mirror this all the way across. I'm gonna click on OK. And so for this, we're going to assume that there isn't any framing across the top here just for the sake of this video not getting super long. And so I may come back in and talk a little bit more about adding sheathing and other things like that. But for right now, let's go ahead and first of all, let's save this, but then let's take this into drawing mode and take a look at some of the scheduling capabilities that we have in here. So we're gonna start by saving this. And then once we've saved this, let's go ahead and take our design into drawing mode. So we're gonna go down to drawing and click on from design. And so it's going to ask us what to reference and also some other things about our templates. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as an 11 by 17. I'm basically gonna leave this as is and I'm gonna click on okay. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take this and it's gonna export it to our drawing. And when we come in here, it's gonna ask us to place our base view. So that's gonna be the first view that's on our sheet. So I'm just gonna click right here for right now. And I'm not gonna do anything else with this at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. So what this allowed us to do is this allowed us to create a front view 
of our shed. Well, we can add multiple different views in here by clicking on these different things. So in this situation, I wanna add another view. It's gonna be a projected view. It's gonna ask for a parent view, which I'm gonna click on this one. And you can see how I can move this over in order to create both top views and elevation views. And notice how when I drag this to the left or when I drag this up above, it's giving me different views based on where my mouse goes. So if I drag this, if I drag this diagonally, it's giving me a bottom view or top view, depending on where this is located. So I'm actually gonna hit escape and undo that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this down to right here. So you can just single click on this and move your mouse around in order to do that. But now I'm gonna add a projected view by clicking on this and moving my mouse up. I'm gonna set another projected view right here. I'm gonna set another projected view right here. And so notice these are all aligned so that if you create dimensions in here, they'll actually align inside of this drawing. And for now, I'm just gonna delete this title block out. If you use the projected view, you can only move this aligned with this item. So I can move this in and out, but I can't move it up and down. So for this one, you can move it pretty much anywhere you want. But for the ones that are aligned, you can only move them left and right, up and down. But now, so now let's add a table. So in order to do this, I'm gonna click on tables and it's going to ask me what to reference. And I'm gonna tell it to reference shed for YouTube and then I'm going to click. And so what this is gonna do, and we're gonna to have to move some stuff around a little bit, but what this is gonna do is this is actually going to count out all of the different parts and pieces that we have in here. So it gives me a list of all of the 15 foot long pieces that I need, the nine foot one inch long pieces that I need. Because we modeled these as components, these are getting scheduled out properly inside of our model. And so in addition, this also gave us a legend in here of which one of these reference references the others. And one thing you're gonna notice is these are currently in here as steel. That's because we didn't set a material type in our model. So if we go back and we select the whole thing, if we go back and we're gonna type the S key in order to search and I'm gonna type in material and we're gonna add a physical material to all of these. So I'm just gonna go in here to the wood option. And I think we can go ahead and assume this is all gonna be pine. I'm just gonna select everything, then click and drag this, and this is gonna apply the pine material to my whole model. Well, now if I save this, then I go back into my drawing. You're gonna notice that there's a little button right here um, that gives me a little yellow marker. Well, the yellow marker is indicating this is out of date. So if we click on this, it's gonna go through and it's gonna re-reference this sheet and notice that this whole thing updated based on that. And so I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit and we could come in here and dimension all of this as well. I think I'm gonna do a whole series on just creating drawings and some of the options that are in here. But if you wanted to create dimensions for your different framing, so if you wanted to go like from this point to this point, you could add, you could add different dimensions in here in order to really display the measurements that you need inside of this model. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Would you like to see more videos like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.